constant product formula is the math that Uniswap uses in order to price a token pair. So if we go back to our Forex Bureau analogy, um, we'll draw the Bureau, but instead of a Forex Bureau, it is now a Uniswap smart contract. So if you think about what a Forex Bureau does, it's, it really just is a very simple functionality. You take in one currency and you deliver another currency at a given rate. Um, and so this functionality doesn't require real estate and salaries and all of this. You could code it into a smart contract, uh, which is like a robot, which has a given set of instructions. Then you are going to copy that robot and its instructions onto many, many computers around the world, which makes it decentralized and, and uh, makes it safe from any single party uh, changing those rules. So once you do deploy these uh, liquidity pools or Uniswap smart contracts, uh, they act like the reserve tokens at a Forex Bureau. So this Uniswap smart contract uses a constant product formula which is as simple as uh, x times y equals k. So x is the number of tokens of one side of the pair, y is the number of tokens of the other side of the pair, and k is the constant product uh, that is followed by this formula. So for example, if we had, say, token x inside of this smart contract, and we had 1,200 of them. Then we had token Y, which was 400. Okay? So this is the starting liquidity inside of this smart contract, uh, which is deployed onto the blockchain. Uh, so if you were to give a, a price of this token to start, it would be X divided by Y. Right? In which case is 1,200 divided by 400, which equals 3. So this would be the starting price of this token pair, X and Y, given that the liquidity in the smart contract is as follows. Now, with some simple math, you can derive uh, variations of what X would be. So if x over y uh, is equal to price, then that means x is equal to y times the price. Right? If we substitute x into here, right, we effectively have y squared times the price equals the constant, which means that price equals k over y squared, or another way you can you can uh, place it is y equals k over price square root. Right? So you can easily easily derive uh, various uh, equations in order to determine the price given that x and y have changed. So if we just uh, remove this from down here and keep that side. So this price curve is defined as follows. Right? This here is token Y. This here is token X. And the price curve is as follows. Right? And when you're starting off at this 1,200 tokens of X and 400 tokens of Y, and maybe you're somewhere around here when you start off, right? Uh, and the price is three, well, three dollars or whatever your, your pair is. So let's say somebody comes to the bureau and says, okay, I'm gonna buy one token of Y, one Y, and I am going to deposit Three token X. Right? 
in which case what would happen is you would have 1203, right? Token X, and you would have 399 token Y after the transaction is complete. What this would do is would take you to this point in the curve, right? And the price, which is x over y, now becomes 1203 divided by 399. And you have to keep in mind that whenever there's a transaction, there's a fee on Uniswap. Uh, and right now with version 2, uh, that fee is 0.3%. Uh, but later when we talk about version 3, that fee can vary uh, between 0.05%, 0.3%, and 1% depending on the pair and uh, the liquidity pool that is put in place. So that charge is on top of that. But for basic math, we'll just uh, stick with this. Um, and this 1203 divided by 399 gives us the price, which is roughly 3.01511. So the price has increased when somebody came to buy token Y and deliver token X. And so as that is happening, and more and more people are coming to this smart contract and t buying and selling and taking more of token Y and depositing more of token X, um, slowly you move down the curve until infinity, right? What this means is that this liquidity that is placed in here is placed from zero to infinity in Uniswap version two. Uh, and what this means is that if the market decides to buy all 400 token Y, your price is gonna to go to infinity. If the market decides to sell token Y and buy all of token X, then your price will go to zero, right? And this is a very volatile proposition, which version two has. And it is the reason why you see so much of the DeFi space and the tokens listed on these decentralized exchanges going shooting up in value and then crashing so quickly. Um, because you can easily go to infinity if you sell 400 tokens to the market, but you can easily go back down to three dollars uh, or three, whatever this is, uh, if you sell 400 back to the market. And so this creates a massive amount of volatility. Um, and so a lot of token, a lot, a lot of tokens have said, well, how do we create a rug-proof token? So uh, in our case, uh, the first step that we took in order to prevent this from happening is uh, to max the number of GPO tokens per wallet to 100,000. Uh, 100,000 tokens per wallet is the hard cap uh, for the life of the project. And this will avoid any single party having too much of the total uh, supply in order to drop the price so quickly, given that we were on using Uniswap version two. Now, the other drawback to Uniswap version two is you can imagine is the amount of money, right? Right now we're talking about token X and token Y, but the amount of money that needs to be deposited, um, and in some case that's dollars or equivalent to Ethereum or Bitcoin or any other uh, pair that, that your asset class is paired with, that requires money. Um, and that money is limited in some of these new projects. You know, if you have a bank that is underwriting the project, that's different, but a lot of these projects are not underwritten by a big bank with lots of liquidity. So in order to create the liquidity strong enough to handle and grow a token, uh, you need more money inside of this smart contract. And so Uniswap uh, came up with something which is uh, quite interesting. Um, I'm sorry, not Uniswap, uh, SafeLoo. SafeMoon said that we are going to charge 10% every time this transaction of their SafeMoon token takes place on the decentralized exchange. Of that 10%, we are going to take 5% and put it into the liquidity pool, and the other 5% we are going to redistribute it out. Um, so using a similar model, what this ends up doing is you get 5% of the daily volume which is being added in, in real money or dollars or tokens to this liquidity pool. And that in, creates a larger K value, right? And a larger K value allows you for a lot larger purchases before you hit infinity, right? So SafeMoon started with about $777,000, I believe it was. Um, and in which case, if you sold $777,000 worth of SafeMoon, it would have gone to zero. 
Uh, but over time, with the constant transactions, 5% of the volume was being added to this liquidity pool, which allowed it to go from zero to $6 billion uh, in a few months. And it was a very powerful concept uh, because you're able to grow your liquidity pool without actually uh, going out there and raising money. So with GoFest and GPL, we use this concept of the 10%, um, but instead of uh, redistributing 5% and putting 5% in the liquidity pool, we are placing all 10% into the liquidity pool. Uh, and the reason for this is because we have a hard cap of 100,000 GPOs. Um, so, and also we don't believe so much in the redistribution of tokens. Um, I think that growing the liquidity pool is uh, extremely, extremely important. Uh, and so this is how we've modeled it, similar to SafeMoon, but with all 10% of every transaction going into the liquidity pool, increasing the K value, allowing for larger and larger transactions to be filled so that you guys, when you make your, you know, whatever X on the GPO token, you know that you can come to the exchange on gopesa.com, which is powered by Uniswap behind it, uh, to sell your tokens and there'll be enough Ethereum or dollars or whatever other liquidity in that uh, smart contract to be able to pay you out at a reasonable price without slipping the token down to zero or you know to infinity if you're buying. So this is basically the map uh, behind the version two of Uniswap. And this in itself is a, is a great model, but as we were building the uh, tokenomics for GoFesa, uh, we were blessed with something called Uniswap version three. And this is a absolute game changer. And in version three, um, it allowed us to place liquidity in a concentrated range, uh, which is almost like having leverage. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit in part four of this video. Uh, and um, yeah.